Whoa, stop, 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 stop talking. Stop talking on the balcony. Stop talking at the back of the room. Stop whatever you're doing. Stop and listen. Stop and listen to Alfredo. I promise you, he, this man is extraordinary. I was lucky enough to uh, go to an agroecology meeting in Montpellier earlier this year, and the deal was that I would do some moderating like this, and then they would take me to some um, agroecological farm. And, uh, but for many, many reasons, it didn't work out. And at the last minute, uh, I had nowhere to go, so the Guardian didn't have any piece from me, whatever. And then somebody said, ah, there's this man in Portugal. We've heard of this man, Alfredo. And uh, he said, you should go there. And I spent two days by train getting, getting to his farm. And it was a total revelation. It was a, this was, you can imagine a sort of great cork oak forest. Uh, surrounded by devastated wheat lands and, and, and whatever. And when I got there, I realized that this was a great social and ecological experiment. And one of the most, uh, what's the word, uh, inspiring uh, places I think I've, I've been to in very many years. We've heard an awful lot today about theories, about ideas, about policies, about the need for this, the need for that. What is going on in central Portugal is something, it's very, very practical. It's being worked out on a big scale by, by farmers like Alfredo. It's, um, it's, it's a question of how do you, it's, instead of working with, uh, on a small scale, it's working on a big scale. Instead of being simple, it is deliberately, deliberately complex. It is the idea is to grow as much as possible, and not, not as little as possible. The idea is to find new markets. There's a whole sort of philosophy which is emerging uh, out of a very, very ancient system of farming. So I'm going to hand you over to Alfredo. He's going to try and explain to you uh, what, he, what he's been doing. It's, it's, a non, it's an ongoing experiment. It's not finished. It's not a, you can't call it a huge success yet. You can't, it's, it's, it's being worked out by a collective of people. And what, the other thing that I'm going to say is that it was, it was important because it, it linked the, uh, the individual, it, it linked people to the land uh, to the point where the social, the social is just as important as the ecological. And uh, so he brought it all together. We wrote a piece in the, in, in, in the paper, and it was read actually quite widely. Um, and I think it's a model for which, which all of us can begin to understand using trees and using animals. Alfredo, go away. Take it away. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the invitation and thank you for listening. It's, it's easier to, to talk than listen. And uh, I want also to thank the people that is in the farm that allowed me to be here. And I hope you don't have big expectations from your words, but I will try to explain you what are we doing there and uh, especially why are we doing those things. So. Uh, we don't have dogmas, that's the most important thing. We like hypotheses, and uh, our main hypothesis is the idea that uh, we humans don't still have no idea how to relate with the natural system. And uh, the result of this is that we have the evidence that we are the unique species that don't attend to resources when we think to multiply. And so when you, we grow up, we destroy the ecosystems. You know that the ecosystems are evolutive systems. So uh, we have, from these hypotheses, two big challenges. First, how to recover the ecosystems the faster we can. And the, you, we don't know too much about this. We are talking about ecology. But then we have a second challenge. That's how to support 8 billion of people when you don't press the ecosystems. So. Uh, to find, of course, a uh, balanced and uh, a nice reality. Uh, why, how are we looking for these challenges? Well, for different uh, ways. First, history. History is very difficult because it's always a narrative. It's always a story. And we have to be very careful, but we have to look at it. And normally, you look only for the recent history. And we have a big history. We have 2,000 two year, uh, uh, million years, uh, 2,000 uh, 
200,000 years as a species. And uh, well, there we have different uh, uh, ways, of course, science, when we link science to technology, it's a new world. But we have to don't uh, forget the things that we don't know. Nicolau de Cusa write this very important book that it's Dr. Ignorantia that uh, show us the importance to respect whatever we don't know. And we don't know a lot of things in ecology. And finally, intuition, the right part of our brain. We have not only work with the rational part. So I start, let's jump to the farm. And our farm, it's of course in the Milky Way. And it's important because we have uh, a cosmovision that is related with this. We are in a very nice planet uh, called Earth or called Gaia. And uh, this is important because we are not normally proud of being from the universe, from the, the, the earth. We are proud from being from Portugal or from this empire or that empire. We don't have even a word to say that we are from universe, from, from earth. Uh, connected with this, we have this uh, notion and this hypothesis uh, uh, formulated by Mr. Lovelock that uh, the heart it's a big, big, big macroorganism. And it works like a system as together. A, a system, an organism, uh, of course, bigger than us. And there we are from the Mediterranean uh, biotope and uh, in, in the Mediterranean we are in the Iberican Peninsula. In the Iberican Peninsula, people started to live more, uh, with more uh, presence, more or less 12,000 years ago, when the earth system stabilized. Okay, it's important to understand how our system developed from the beginning, 400, I'm not good in numbers, four, five, zero, zero, zero billion years. Uh, we are in the last part, but in that period, especially first in the Paleolithic, then in the Neolithic, people start to live in our farm. We have evidences, really evidences of people in the Neolithic living in this farm. This is the farm, the location. And uh, in the Neolithic, uh, we, had, we know now that more people lived in my region than nowadays. Okay, we are talking about 7,000 years ago, and we are talking about the, the moment where we mixed the, the three classical ways to relate with nature, that was gathering, hunting, and fishing, with the new technology of farming, a very different type of farming, small farming, complex farming, especially managed by women, and then the pastoralism. So uh, this is our big, big inspiration. Why? not only because of the cosmovision that were periods of uh, sacred, periods of peace, periods of abundance, periods where we, we worked really hard, the three uh, big pillars, that is the connection with the herd, the connection with the community as part of the system, with us humans, but also the connection with what we call spirit. And uh, about this, I have to tell you that we don't have a religious approach, but we are sure that is in this project there is a force of complexification. There is something that we call spirit, that is the way that this energy makes the system getting better and better and more complex and more complex. And if you are not connected with this, and it's of course much about our interior, it's difficult to, to deal with this, this idea. So this is the big inspiration from these people. These people lived uh, in what we know more and more about history, but uh, it's important to tell you that this period was the biggest period of, of the farm where I'm living now today, not the last 2,000 years. And we have to know more about this and to pick some good inspirations here. So then, um, in that period, of course, that was behind the Romans, uh, that was this communitary approach with communitary bushes, with very small villages, with uh, small parts of agriculture and pastoralism. That was where the system of Montaro started, where we started to put, to domesticate and to put some animals in the, in the forest, okay? Then, uh, comes the empire concept. And it's important to tell you that here there is a very, very important ethical uh, split. We started, for, from, till now, till that moment, 
we were part of the system. We were following the ethics of nature. Nature serves, nature gives, nature uses the power for the others, for the common good, not for ourselves. In, in the empire concept, Greeks, Romans, and so on, we get our human concept, our human, we started to think about our human ethics, our human project, our project, not the project of the life, of the plan, of the macroorganism that created us. So, this, in the spirit of the Romans, and then the Romans, of course, collapse, all our civilizations collapse for the same reason, we don't respect nature, we don't attend to resources, so we make our plan. And, this is where we have the collapse of the Romans, then we have the, the people from the north that coming, then we have the Arabic people coming. It's important also to tell you that I am living in a place where probably most, more cultures lived in this planet and lived and stay and bring their visions. We are talking about Celtics, we are talking about people from Egypt, from the Mediterranean, we are talking about people from Africa, okay? And all the people stay there and lived. Uh, this period of, uh, of collapse creates a new opportunity for the nature, uh, the, the, the ecosystem reestablish and get a, an, again to climax. It's important to tell you that in the Neolithic we had 80% of our planet in climax. What uh, we can produce in climax in an ecosystem is nothing to do with the, with the desert that we have now are our ecosystems, that we pressed our ecosystems. So, in the spirit again, and we started the Montaro system 10 centuries again uh, after the collapse of these big civilizations. The Montaro system, it's something that, uh, um, it's an agroecological system uh, done, think by the man, but trying to respect the limits of nature. And it's based, of course, in eco-efficiency, in cooperation that we call symbiosis, in the connection between wild things and domestic things, and uh, trying to experiment different things. And uh, very earlier we realized that without trees, without shrubs, without wild, it's not possible to survive in our region. Mediterranean climate, it's very special for different reasons, but uh, we, 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 we could, uh, establish this concept of Montaro, uh, respecting nature but attending to our needs. So then we all know uh, we pushed nature again, we cut the trees. It's important you to know that the Portuguese people, they didn't want to discover no, uh, nothing in the planet. We, we really get lost on the sea trying to survive because we, we eat it, our system, our planet. We cut it, all the trees, we were, we were starving. So we keep, picked the boats and went to the sea to survive. And then we found the ways to India and to Brazil, but that was not, the history tells us that we are a big people that, that no, this is a consequence of our, again, our disaster. So um, we, we, we broke the Montaro for a long time and uh, just to tell you some ideas, in this moment we stole, for instance, a very, very important uh, uh, tool from nature, that's the wild animals. We have now uh, only 4% of the terrestrial biomass in, in, in wild. If you think that wild animals, as any beings of nature in any kingdom, are tools of the system, and we had no idea what we've done, creating this, this, this army of uh, domestic animals, to survive, uh, it's also it's important for me to think about this. Of course, this is more of the same. We, we didn't uh, uh, have the notion that we are part of a project that needs us to serve it, that create us because it needs us. So, years later, uh, I was eight years old. This farm was managed by my family for more than five generations in the revolution in Portugal came. It was a very nice story, but I was pushed out of this, the land, and then land was all nationalized in the south of Portugal. Portugal. And uh, I was 15 years uh, uh, out of the land. There was a, a communist project. Uh, it's important to tell you that the communism and capitalism has exactly the same approach to nature. It's using it. So, uh, but 15 years later, in 1990, uh, the government decided to return the farm to the old owners. My, the, my grandfather was the, the farmer. My grandfather was the farmer. I'm sorry about my English. And uh, it was my time, the new generation. When I started there, it only all, we were based on three crops, sheep for meat, 
wheat and, uh, and, uh, and cork, but it was a desert. It didn't look like a desert, but it was a desert in the way that I needed to buy all the inputs to make something happen. You know, without inputs, external inputs, nature was not working. We destroyed the solar panel, that it's biodiversity, that charges the, the, the battery that is the soil. And then you can move the car, but you move the car with fossil energies. Uh, no, if you don't have a solar panel, that it's mainly biodiversity, you cannot run. And that's what's what I found. I don't have any idea about this, but I was observing. This is the farm we started in that moment. To my mother was a really a Christian approach and she wanted to create labor. She wanted really to treat the land as a common good. And it was not possible for me to, to make labor, to make jobs, because I was focused on the productive. I started, my first idea was to increase 1,000 sheep in 600 hectares to 5,000 uh, sheep. It was a disaster, of course. So that makes us think, what else can we do here? What else, what are the alternatives? What can, and in that moment, we, we realized was what was Montaro system. And we decided in 1993 to run to Montaro and experience it. So in Montaro, we started to add different animals. I have to tell you that the animals in this farm are not part of the economic equation. We try to think as animals and then any other being as in agroecology as elements of the system, trying to understand what are the functions that they are providing to the system, not on the money that they will come to, to bring to us. So we introduced pigs, we introduced turkeys, we introduced uh, sheep would change the sheep to the black sheep. It's very important to think that uh, domestication is a process and uh, if we work with very ancestral domestic animals, that's our choose for all, uh, we, can, uh, we can even think that they can provide different functions to the ecosystem, not only the function of being part of a food chain, that's what we are looking for normally. So we introduce this very special uh, breed of cows also, Barrozão, uh, the ancestral horses, uh, Soraya, uh, and donkeys, chicken for eggs, diversity, diversity, diversity. I will say that diversity is one of our keys for everything to make a more complex system. We normally, we have a very simple mind and we don't like complexity because it is difficult to challenge, to, to deal with complexity, but it's very, very important. So we introduced again, like in Montaro, the olives, the horticulture, the, the different crops, cereals and so on. But we are mainly based looking for soil recovering and for uh, forest recovering. For, uh, regenerating naturally the forest. And the forest, of course, has this type of forest. It's not really a forest. We are trying now to change to the forest. This is a con human concept, but based on three structures of especially Quercus shrubs and pastures behind. So we fixed the, the, the houses, they were abandoned, and we started also to collect, to look for acorns. It's a, our symbol. I will talk a little bit more about this trying to work hard with wildlife, learning how the wildlife is there. We have still a lot of wildlife, different species. This is our favorite species, the wildcat, but we have different ones. And so working with community, with young people, with permaculture, we created a school in the farm. We started independent projects for other people to establish there, not only our vision, our pyramidical vision, and then we, we, we were forced to add different functions to the farm to survive. We were focused by initially in tree products. When we wake up, we were having a lot of uh, material. So we were forced to create, we have now nine small micro factories in the farm, a bakery, a slaughterhouse for chicken. We have a charcuterie, a meat processing, a vegetable processing, olive oil, vinegars, wine, uh, and introduced a small industrial kitchen to mix everything. Then we were forced to learn how to sell this. And we started to wholesale, but the market was not good. Then we started to retail, so we started a shop in Lisbon, because we, first we try in our small village, we failed, and then we get to a little bit in this bigger town, we failed, then we get to Lisbon, and we, we could survive. But now, of course, we are based on a very strong program of CSA. We have 130 families supporting us. We think when we are 200 families, we fly alone. We only complain from ourselves. We are out of the market. 
But then we started to open doors to people, not for having money for tourism, but to, to allow people to see what we are doing and to allow us to explain them what, why are we doing this. So we have now our organization, we are 35 people in a cooperative. I dismiss to deal with land as a private uh, assets, as an economic assets. Uh, so I led the land to the, to the cooperative, a non-seeking-for-profit non, non cooperative, and we are organizing the Department of Nature, a department of sharing landscape. We want to share, not to sell, to, to, to share food and produce and transform food, but also a very important department of self-control. Nature is based on three pillars, big source of energy, constant, then cycles, cycles are very important also in our organizations in terms of cell, cell but then lots, thousands of self-control procedures. And so now we have all well, the processing of food, different trends, this is the shop in Lisbon, uh, a lot of social foods. What about today? Today, well, we transform in a cooperative, it's an integral cooperative, I will try to explain you but we mainly exist to make experiences. And there, there are two types of experiences, technical, ecological, technical experiences, and social experiences. And it's very important to tell you that we are based on this group of people, it's just an, uh, uh, some names. Um, it's, it's, we have to think about the women, there is only a very, very strong woman, there's a lot of strong women in this region, but Anna Primavera is one of the best thinkers about how nature works, she's a Brazilian woman, but of course we found there, we never invented nothing in this farm, we just wanted to think what is our reality, what is our dream, and who can help us with ideas. So, now uh, we are working with all these people, some people more directly like Ernst Goetz. We have the luck to, to have Ernst Goetz as a teacher for some time and being there in the, in the farm every year. But uh, uh, so now what about uh, ecology and techniques? We are mainly uh, working with the landscape, water retention uh, basics. It's a yeoman's idea coming from Australia. So whenever we don't have trees, we, we structure the soil uh, related with the natural shape of the soil and we use the yeoman's plow. Uh, then we are using actively the ideas of uh, Alan Savory, he was in the farm this year. We really believe on the impact of uh, and the functions of animals, big animals especially, to recover soils. But then the concept of Ernst Goetz that it's the... the dynamic succession agroforest, food forest, in, in, in trying then in the social part to move it to a collective, to a community approach. So these are some photos of uh, a part that we destroyed. My parents destroyed all these, the soil, the, the trees uh, in the last decades, and we are trying to recover it with a lot of species. I have to tell you, of course, that as you know better than me, the, the, the tree, uh, above the soil, it's the big motor of nature. We are eating and we are using the tools of nature. Animals, uh, animal plants are tools of nature more than anything. The big motor, the big efficient being, it's the tree, okay? So we should think more about eating about, from trees. We, we should, of course, know what is the accident of the system. Otherwise, we eat the system. Nobody knows what is the accident of the system. Even a, 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 an acorn could be not an, an accident of the system. It will be needed for another being or for establish a new tree. So we have to, to work hard to learn because, we, as you all know, we have big challenges in front of us. So, this is agroforest, uh, uh, this is a holistic management, this is about acorn, acorn it's our symbol, why? Because acorn was punched, pushed out of our food, it was our main food in, the, in all the north hemisphere, it's a wonderful food, there is no reason to don't eat acorns, they were pushed out of, because of the empire, the power concentration, it was not easy to deal with acorns in a community forest, 
uh, with taxes at the same time, and also with the war. There are a lot of reasons, but we are actively, our narrative that pushes in our, inside of us tells us, Akon, it's not good for you. Akon, it's the best food. I can guarantee We do a lot of things nowadays with Akons, and uh, we will jump to social. Well, in social, we transform our organization that was originally a private organization in integral cooperative. What is an integral cooperative? It's a space of dialogue when you are forced to cooperate. We all born on a competitive system and our brain works especially in what we participate in. So we are all beings of competition. There is no competition in nature. There is no parasitism. There is no a lot of concepts that we pushed from our mind to nature in my way of, of seeing. So we have to relearn how to cooperate. And for that, for instance, in the food chain, if we create a cooperative where the consumers that we call co-producers are, then the people that are working directly in the nature, in the relation with nature, then other uh, stakeholders like uh, neighbors, like the owners of the land, like the people who is living around that use the farm for different things. This is also related on the challenge how to use a farm as a common good. A common good has different users. And the, the big challenge is how to harmonize all, the, all, the, all the, the users. They are different. Someone is working, is, is, is interesting on, the, on the, the working concepts, how the salary, the conditions. Someone who is eating from the farm, it's, it's, it's thinking on other things. How to, to, to deal with this? We push this to the, to the back, to the shoulders of the owner. The owner, pressed by the economy, cannot deal with this as a piece of land, as, as a common good. Good. So, the integral cooperative, it's very important. Then we have a sharing uh, harvest. It's the name of our CSA program. It's very, very important because it's a way to connect people with uh, all the challenges that we have that push consumers to really a responsible way. It's not possible in the system that we have. People cannot participate on the, the choice, uh, on the way we manage the ecosystems in general, or in particular, where people cannot be responsibilized, and, and uh, of course, because they cannot participate. They can only choose about some uh, possibilities in the shell of a supermarket. Then, of course, we are using different methods to try to help us to make decisions together, to push for intelligent, collective intelligence, like sociocracy, like agile, like behind the budget, like different, uh, like uh, open space technologies. This is the idea of the, the consumers cooperative that's called uh, Freixo do Mayo. It's related with food. And uh, I will start it to end to say that I think we think together that it's not possible to, to deal with our challenges only in the farm. We have to jump the, the gate of the farm. And uh, in, to give you two examples, we are part of a, a group of farmers in Europe that uh, push, that are trying to put on the European court the, the, the union, the, the commission, and the, and the government of Europe uh, because of uh, the climate change uh, um, goals, they are not doing what they told us that they will do. Uh, we are not uh, feeling, uh, so we feel really, really that we are doing our, trying hard to do our part and uh, they are not doing. And when, don't, when, that, when, we, when we have this disruption, we have to try at least first to use the institutions but then we are trying hard to support this, this idea to create a new legal frame for the governments of the planet. This is, we really believe, and it's a big tradition in Portugal from different authors ending on Pessoa, that uh, the future will be the no empire, the global empire. The, the, the global empire, it's the no empire concept. It's the nature, this, we live really as beings, as other beings of nature, serving nature, and for that, of course, we need to understand nature. So, this is a, a, a long speech, I will not bother it today, but I will finish to uh, trying to, to uh, ask yourselves, um, what, what, is, what, what we'll do in the future, uh, we, 
are we, are we able to be part of the plan of life, to accept this, we that we call ourselves twice sapiens, uh, look to our results, look to our, uh, and also look to our kids and to the next generations. It's obvious that more important than our individual um, things, our individual interests are the communitary interests and are especially the communitary interests of the new generations. So, uh, and finally to share with you that we from, I'm living in this farm for 30 years, I'm experiencing myself day in day, it's not easy, but trying hard to be part of the plan of life and not of my plan, of the plan of humanity. Thank you very much. So, Alfredo, thank you so much indeed. Just tell me, I will shock these people here, how many products do you produce on your farm? How many food products? Is it 50? Is it 100? Is it 120? How many, how many roughly do you sell? So, now we reduce because it's very hard to work with so many complexity. <laughs> we, 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 in some moment, we produce more than 500 reference of food. Nowadays, we are based on 300 reference of food. We touching animals, fruits, uh, vegetables, um, conserves, but especially fresh food. It's, it's a, it's All a, types of meat, eggs. Yeah, no, it, it's an extraordinary thing. And, and the other thing which I noticed that was, you found a different way to sell. So you, you sell to your own shop, or you sell through your own shop in, in a sort of farmer's market type thing in Lisbon, but also you work a kind of box scheme in the sense that people come to you, or you, you take them your food. How many families do you need to become sustainable, if you like? So, uh, of course, the reference, we have to think that uh, from a pig we took a lot of reference because we took a lot of products. A reference is a code bar. We found out that the market is not feedable with agroecology for us for different reasons. It's not reasonable for me to produce, well, we, we, the, the animals, for instance, are a consequence of the ecosystem, but it's a good protein. I prefer the vegetable protein, but when I, I have a surplus or what we think that is a surplus, uh, of the system, I put it in a, in a shop, and if nobody goes there to buy it, it's reasonable to sell like this, so uncertainly. And uh, this is, of course, a consequence also in the price, because if I, if I don't sell this product, I have a loss and I have to increase the margin. And we don't like to work with rich people. We don't export food. We, all our food is for a local market. So, you know, there was a moment that uh, we found out the CSA concept, mm -hmm. and uh, we, we tried the concept. It was really uh, inspiring for us. We started uh, four years ago. We have now, we are serving weekly food for every day mm -hmm. for more than 130 families, and we think when we are 200, 250 families, we fly alone. We are independent from the market. Okay, we can sell some things for the market, but we are supported by ourselves, by our family, for the people that know us, that, mm. that like what we are doing. This, those people will be the owners of the farm because they are the users, they are connected with the, the decisions, they can participate, with, for instance, with sociocracy in the way that we are uh, trying to, to, to manage this ecosystem. Of course, we have a challenge that it's using this ecosystem to feed people, but also we have to recover it because 600 hectares in terms of ecology, in terms of principles, if we do really nice food forest, it can uh, feed much more than 200 families. Okay? Some people say that uh, we, when, when we have the, the planet in climates, we can be maybe two, 25 billion of people. And we had it in the beginning. So we have, and people can participate on this. Why are, do we have animals? Do we have more animals? Why are the animals? I, I missed the, the, we are connected with some projects, European projects, only for one thing, because it's very important for us to be monitorized, okay? 
We are not sure. We are just experiencing. And you, if you are experiencing, you have to share with the others, not only for you. And you have to share it in a reasonable way. So if you have external people looking at what you're doing and the results, and if it's are okay or not good, so it, that's very, very important. And uh, just one last question before you guys, please ask whatever you want. Um, is, is, in such a complex system, is it right that one person, you, the owner, should make the decisions? How do you, how do you work that? So, uh, I don't think that's, that's right. Mm -hmm. I really, I, I, I felt this in my life. I was, I was not able alone to deal with this complexity. So, uh, I was forced by reality. Mm -hmm. I, I really believe that as I told, we don't, we don't need plans to act. We need to know where we are, what is your dream, and then every day accepting the reality and deal with reality. So this was a good example. I was, I was creating, not alone, we are 35 people, grow more and more, but uh, uh, I, was, I was feeling that I was not able to deal with uh, this complexity alone. Okay. I needed collective intelligence, and this is working. We are happy with it. Well, it's very impressive, and I, 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 without inviting everyone to your farm, I, I would say... You are all it. invited, of course. <laughs> Don't all go at the same time. Proud to have you there. Well, no, because I mean, you can volunteer, you can work. I mean, I could, could I go and work there? A yes, bit? you can work, you can just see, you can stay with us, you can camp. We have different ways. We have a web page, you can look at it, Fresho do Mayo. And uh, you, are, you are very welcome, of course. Uh, that's where I'll be in June. Now, okay, what, what questions have we got here for, for Alfredo? These are, these are any, anyone, woo, here we are, one in, one in the, the front here, chap, please. Hi, um, thank you very much. Very inspiring presentation. So my question, the, the session was called Planting Water. And yes. I'm interested in what makes your farm more desirable to a raindrop. So what is it that you've done that makes the raindrop more keen to land on your farm than another farm? Could you just outline maybe some of the strategies that you've used to, to plant water? So the concept of uh, planting water is the concept of Ernst Gutsch. Uh, and the, the idea is to reestablish the, the normal cycles of water. Nowadays, we don't have the normal cycles of water because especially the water is think on the normal natural system to go inside of the soil slowly, not to run over and make erosion, and then to the spring and then slowly to the river. This is connected with a lot of things, uh, especially with the type of soil, compactation, organic matter, to the, but also it's connected with the structures of the trees, of the multi-structures. Uh, so, uh, it's also uh, connected when you don't have the possibility to have immediately trees with, uh, for instance, the key line concept, the yeoman's uh, thinking. So the idea is to um, put out the dams, okay? Uh, maybe we can use some tubes, but uh, you have to think that nature creates complex ecosystems without dams, without tubes. So if we think how, and to follow nature, uh, maybe we find out the way to do all this. Of course, we, have in a, we are in a hurry, we have a pressure. So we, I think we should be open mind to all, tech, all the technology, not only the way na nature works, because we know in ecology now that nature has present three cycles, installation, accumulation, special of information, not from uh, matter, information, it's very, very important, the ADN of different systems, but then climax. And, but these cycles uh, dure at least 9,000 years to 90,000 years in a natural cycle. So do we have this time to support 8 billion people? So we have to, to think. But the, the idea, it's also based on biodiversity. It's also based on uh, um, uh, observing and studying and experiencing what are the real functions sort of the different beings of where we, which we are dealing with? For instance, an animal. An animal is pushing the fertility cycle, but it's also delivering seeds and uh, bacteria and fungus. We work hard with the, the ideas of Mr. Tiga. It's a Japanese that created the concept 
of uh, uh, effective microorganisms and then all the rest, post stamets. For instance, the, the fungus are a lot related with, with water. We don't, we don't realize that, but uh, so there are a mix of, uh, of, uh, of strategies that we are trying hard to implement, to test, to experience, to, with the idea of uh, having more water, natural water, raining water in this farm. The corollary surely is also that you, in the planting of the trees and the use of the animals, you are protecting yourself against the, the ravages of the climate because the temperature in this area gets up to 45, 46, even more. Are you finding that your farm, when your system, protects you better than, say, your neighbours? Of course, well, uh, if you look only for the one function, a very important function, but it's only one one of the trees that is shadow, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's completely different to be in the shadow of a tree at 45, 50 degrees mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. without the shadow. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you, for instance, when we, when we had 10 years ago uh, a big draw for three years, it was completely different, uh, the relation the way we face the draw with multi-activity, with a lot of different animals that monocultures around us, mm -hmm. uh, or uh, farms without trees. It's, it's yeah. the results, and even the economic results, the impact, it's completely different. Any other questions? Well, there's one near the back and then one over here. Hello. Um, I was interested in what you were saying about tree crops. You didn't go into it too much. You said something about acorns. Um, I come from a foraging background, which is now sort of turning into agri-wilding or sort of wild tending, which I, I can sort of sense that you're working on as well, and I'd just like to hear more about that. So. We, we started with animals, like uh, the heritage that we had, and we introduced uh, some fruits like uh, grapes or olives and then horticulture. But now we are, our vision and our dream is to be a farm specially producing fruits. We are planting and specially seeding maybe 50 species, different species of uh, fruit trees, uh, some more domesticated, more, some more wild. But of course, we are based on 10, because it's not possible to, to we, have, we don't have tools immediately to deal with all this complexity. And our 10 uh, fruits are established in uh, different structures, but I will not say by the order of the structures. Our first fruit is still there, it's acorn from different Quercus. And then we are thinking about figs, lemons, almonds, Chestnuts, um, chestnuts, pinus from Pinus pinea, that's the third dry fruit, and then uh, queens, and then we have another thing that it, we called fresh fruit for all the year, for 300 families. There are different species that makes the year around. But these are the main th ones that we have plans to manage, to crop, that fit in, them, in, in themselves. And if you think about a big chestnut, uh, 40 meters up, that deliver tons of leaves every year in the winter and let the sun, the light comes, and then imagine a Quercus here, and then you imagine, ah, I missed olives, I was missing the, uh, one. So, uh, and then you have a Quercus, and then you have here uh, uh, an olive tree and then we have a lemon but from climbing from the olive tree you have two or three grape plants with a lot of uh, grapes, uh, vineyard and well it's, it's a concept this is also powered by a dynamic system so we used a lot the concept of Miss Gilles Lemieux, Le Bois Ramifié, Fracturé so we are using eucalyptus for instance or uh, with love we cannot, they don't allow this, but we love, for instance, to use mm, this being that is hated uh, in, in, uh, normally in our cultures that is, uh, um, uh, now I miss the name, but I will tell you, the well, very high uh, growing trees only to create soil. The trees are probably the best way to grow soil. Uh, forget, okay, compost, it's good. But if you 
create these uh, shoots, ear shoots, and you, you smash them and you put in the soil with a link of the basidiomycetes and the actinomycetes, you can make miracles in a in few years. Yeah. Any other ones at the back there, please? Hey. Islantus, Islantus altissimus. It's the, the biggest one. Islantus altissimus. It's a tree that grows seven centimeters per day and he's all over here. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, thank you so much. And I had a question about, obviously, you know, with the fires burning in Australia and there's been many fires in Portugal and all over the world, the super fire is a relatively, you know, scary phenomenon. Planting trees as a farmer um, in a very fire-prone area, what are you doing about that and how do you feel? So we, we have an history of fire. Uh, we had some fires in the farm. Um, well, it's a very complex question, but uh, especially uh, we have to think that photosynthesis decreases temperature and uh, we really need permanent structures of photosynthesis. The most crazy thing that we've done was pushing out these permanent structures of photosynthesis, what it is. So when you have photosynthesis only in one part, you create something, uh, an air flow that provides fire, okay? Especially if you have you, we are waiting, we had uh, more and more frequency, what we called heat uh, phenomena, one week with 50 degrees. Yeah. So, uh, but, um, so this is climate change, it's, it's a reality, and I think it will be uh, initiation for humankind, but it's a big challenge. So if you have, but directly, if you have different structures of photosynthesis, and uh, if you are prepared with no ignitions, uh, with people uh, knowing what to do in different, in, in all senses, it's of course, you cannot avoid um, a big fire, but you can manage how the fire uh, works, let, let's say. Uh, of course, it's, it's, it's a challenge, but uh, what we see from our experiences when you have, uh, the structures well done, uh, the risk of fire, it, it looks that it's bigger, but it's not. Alfred, the principle is a bit like an oasis in the, in, in the desert. It seems that you have effectively a desert around you, and yet in this, in your 500 acres, you have uh, the most extraordinary abundance. I mean, it is the, the oasis principle, is it? Yes, um, well, it's more and more a reality. Um, it's important to also to tell you that we never pressed f uh, neighbors. I think we are, we are not sure. We are trying hard and open minds and open doors to all the people to, to change ideas, to see us. But uh, it's, 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 it's like that. Uh, all, the, well, this, all over the world, the industrial, systems are having more and more problems. Uh, for instance, related with Prague's. Mm -hmm. um, we look at Prague's as, as a, a sign that we are not doing things correctly. And, uh, and uh, so it's very important for us to have Prague's because they, they give us signs. Yeah. And, uh, but we have less and less Prague's. Yeah. We have the, the, the all around the, a lot of problems more and more with chestnuts, uh, with a lot of, with olives, with big prags that kill all the, with the, with the, uh, it's not a prag, the, 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 the phytophora that it's killing the Mediterranean uh, oaks, it's, it's another story, but uh, we don't have mortality of oaks, we don't have big problems with prags, mm -hmm. and that's something that encourages us, but it's, it's a very short period, 30 mm -hmm. years it's nothing, okay, to, to, to do something, um, but at some time, for instance, uh, Ernst Goetz uh, created a much bigger example in, in his farm mm. in, in Bahia, mm. Um, mm. desert, and now you can go there, and it's, it's amazing. 
the abundance, the production, the life that you can feel there, the streams, the water. It's really inspiring. I, I, how how I essential you. are the animals to the whole system? So the animals are, are very, very important for different reasons, but it's, a, it's easy to understand that um, we have, uh, in our climate, we have four months of desert. This means very hot temperatures and no water. Mm -hmm. And the one of the consequences of this is that the microorganisms that uh, decompose the matter in the soil that power the, the fertility cycle, they stop. Mm -hmm. So when you add animals, the stomach of the animals, they are uh, walking soils because ah. they are making exactly the same concept. They, yes. they are the same bacteria, the same elements that are in the soil, like in our stomach. Our stomach is also part of the, the fertility cycle, as you know. So there is, there is a simple way to explain one of the importance of the, of the, the animals. Of course, you have to, each animal has different um, functions and, um, and also you can look at it and it was based a big important thing on the Montaro uh, from the abilities of different animals. For instance, if I have a cow, the cows don't move the lips, they can only eat a big part of the pasture. But if I have a sheep, they can eat a little bit further. Mm -hmm. If I have a pig, it can eat behind. If mm -hmm. I have a turkey, it can eat the small leaf and the insect that is behind. Mm -hmm. But they are mainly regulators. Mm -hmm. Regulators of insects, of plants, so you forgot that all these beings are instruments of the system, like we are. Okay. So, the, uh, of course, with the with the vision of uh, uh, Alan Savory, that's the vision of nature. If you use animals, uh, like I, uh, like in the ancestral times, I saw it with shepherds. We had we've done this crazy idea because of uh, the working conditions to 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 push out shepherds. Shepherds were very important because they were allowing animals to be in one place and only uh, some months uh, later again in the same place. Mm -hmm. If the animals are closed in a fence and they are open space mm -hmm. and they, they don't allow the roots of the plants to, to, to establish, they don't allow perennials, they don't allow the law of things. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. animals are, are, are a world of things. They are dispersers. They, are, they stimulate the system when they when they walk, they have a lot of functions. So you're not a vegan at the moment. Anyway, now, any other questions, please? No questions. Yeah, well, sorry, there is one here, please. You say um, the farm's 500 acres. What do you think about bigger farms? You know, what, would it work in your system? Or, or are farms that are bigger than 500 acres too big? Sorry? You say your farm is 500 acres in size. What do you think about big farms, industrial farms? Or do you think your system could work if it was a huge farm? So, it's not my system. <laughs> it's all of a system. Uh, our farm that I own, it's now for my kids, it's 600 he hectares, not acres. Well, uh, I started with 7,000 actors and I dismiss. I, I think that uh, size, it's really, really relative. What is the important thing is your, your attitude with the, the, with the land. So it's, of, it's, it's possible in a small scale. I, I work also in a, in a farm only myself with one actor when I, uh, it's my refugee, uh, but I think it's possible for big, big farms it's a question of, uh, in terms of attitude, it's the most important thing, the ethics. Uh, complexity, you have complexity in small scale, the same complexity that you have in bigger scale. So bigger scale can give you some things, but can take you from some, some other things, like observation or connection. I think that the farming of future will be most more related with humans observing and feeling and connecting with nature. So without humans, you can have the robots you, you want. It, I don't believe that it's possible, but with humans, you can do this in one half hectare or in thousand hectares if you have the right people there living as an instrument, living as tools, living as elements of the system. Any other we questions? Oh, anyone up on the, on the galleries? I'm so sorry, we've ignored you. No. 
No question. Can I see anyone? Yes, there is one, sorry. You said that all of your trees are mixed up and they've got um, grapes and things growing in them. How do you harvest that in a sensible fashion? So, there are ways. Uh, you, you, for instance, we know the new agroforests that we are establishing, we use lines uh, because we love also technology and machinery. Uh, we, we are working more and more with platforms, uh, mechanical platforms, for instance, to collect grapes. You know that the, the vineyard, it's a, a plant from, uh, from behind the bushes, I don't remember the term, but uh, so when you put a vineyard climbing to a tree, it's more difficult than when you hang it in the, in the, in the rope to, to allow the machine. But there are, well, <laughs> We, we have so many technology for so many things. It's, it's really possible to, 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 to deal with a non-monoculture uh, and, and, uh, and having good results. For instance, now we, we finished to crop the, the olives and uh, we, well, we finished the olives. We work with uh, uh, some um, carpets to, to crop the olives. And we are, we think on the on the on the, the plan. There is a lot of planification. The farming of future, sh it's it's impossible to not be intense on planification and knowledge. Okay, so we have to think a lot and planify a lot as a concept of permaculture. We have to make plans, plans, plans. Think about the elements. What are the interactions of the elements? And it's possible. It's complex, but it's possible. It's a very nice challenge. Mm -hmm. There was one, one question, yeah, sorry. I just wanted to check that I'd understood something correctly. You said you were talking about the fires and you talked about the trees and said that you need to have leaf at every level and if I'm also correct, in Australia they were clearing the bush under the trees because they thought it would stop the fires spreading. So what you're saying suggests to me that that's not a good strategy and that they would be better leaving the shrubbery underneath to stop this convection current. Is that, have I understood correctly? Yes, Thanks. yes. But it's not only that. You must establish barriers for fires for instance, there are a lot of uh, very interesting plants like uh, Opuntia fincus indica. Either, so you have to protect the fire to entrance, the, the, the our forestry, let's say. But in the, the, the dynamics of the fire in the, in the forestry, it's completely different. If you have green photosynthesis from the bottom to the top or only in one size. Thank you, so very interesting listening to you. I have a question about um, other farmers or landowners around you in Alentejo, but other parts of Portugal. Are you able to influence and therefore see your vision um, of restoring land on a much wider scale? Yes, of course, we are a larger and larger and a larger community. Uh, we are creating a vision, it's not my vision. I don't like the uh, competitive, uh, I, uh, once I read a book, very interesting, small book, it was called The Soul of Farm, and it was starting, there is no types of farming. There is so many types of farming as farmers, because farming is it's an art, it's a relation. And you, we are individuals, we are different from each other, so we, we have to find our, our way. So there is no, well, there are methodologies, there are um, well, uh, projects, but I don't like this vision from this one or that one. But yes, we are more and more, we inspired ourselves and uh, we feel that we are especially a more and more global uh, tendence and, 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 and uh, movement, yeah. And we learn with each other, of course. Um, there, there is one more, yeah.
Sorry, I have a, a very boring British question about the viability of your business and whether you um, take subsidies from the EU for your farming um, and, and how viable and how many people um, your business actually supports. So, we depend nowadays 30% of our income comes from, uh, from the subsidies of UA. It's an important part. Uh, we are a project of surviving. Uh, we don't have money. Uh, we only have the, the farm. And the farm allowed us to, make, uh, to take risks, okay? And allowed us to make something that I will never do if I have to look for my first dignity, let's say. So, um, but uh, that, it's obvious that uh, the, the, the subsidies are important. We, we, we have our strategy uh, for a long time. We don't follow the strategy, of course, of uh, uh, European uh, Commission, uh, but when it cross to the strategy of uh, European Commission, we, we, we think that we deserve and we need to use it, okay? But uh, it's obvious that uh, we feel that this type of farming, it's the most profitable farming that you have. You don't need subsidies. What you need, it's a real economy. It's an economy that don't deal only with the human activities. It's an economy that, with a legal frame, put nature in our reality. We create our project out of the boundaries, out of the way that nature, in the moment we do that, and we have to press it to do it quickly, we will, be, we will need no subsidies. We will be the most profitable farmers, all of us, uh, in this planet. And on that, we have to finish. And I'm very sorry, I could have listened to, to Alfredo talking for a very, very long time. Very inspiring. I'd love to see it being replicated here in Britain in some way. Uh, please come back to Britain anytime you like. Otherwise, all of us are going to go Thank up you. to see you. Thank you very much indeed.